Hey, and welcome back to another video. In today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at the Python map function, which allows you to map a function to an iterable such as a Python list or a tuple. So what we're going to talk about today is why the Python map function is what it is and why it's so powerful and why it's such a good alternative to using for loops or list comprehensions to map a function to an iterable. We're going to talk about how to use the map function with built-in functions, custom functions, and anonymous functions. Then we're going to take a look at some practical examples of how to use the function in, with different lists, with string methods, as well as with dictionaries and tuples in order to look at some really good applied examples of how to use this function. So let's dive right in and get started with using the map function in Python. All right, so what I have here is just this list of words and say we wanted to be able to create a new list that contained only the length of each string in here. So let's take a look at how we would do this without using the map function first so we can better understand why it's a valuable function. So what we can do here is create a new list called lengths and then we're going to use a for loop here um, in order to be able to uh, loop over each word in this list words and calculate the length and append it to our list length here. So what we're going to do is say for word and words and we're going to append to that list of lengths the length of each word. So we're going to say lengths dot append len of word. And so after this we can print out this list lengths. So Let's take a look at what we get back. So we can see that we get this really uh, simple list here that just contains the length of each string. So there's nothing wrong with this approach. It's just a little bit longer than we necessarily need it to be. So we can actually shorten this by using a list comprehension. So what we can do is get rid of all of this code here and just write len of word for word in words. And so this will give us back the exact same list that we had before here. So why are we talking about the map function? The map function helps us be more explicit and intentional with our code. While using a list comprehension or a for loop may seem intuitive at the time of writing it, it doesn't necessarily speak to the intention behind what we're doing. So we could definitely comment this code and be able to explain that, but using the map function makes it that much cleaner. So let's take a look at what the, what the map function really looks like. The map function expects both a function as well as an iterable. So what we're going to do is pass in a function as well as an iterable object, and this then returns a map object, which we can then convert back into a, an iterable object such as a list or a tuple. So say we wanted to recreate our previous example, what we can do is pass in that len function as well as our iterable here. So when we do this, we're going to create this map object now. So the map object in itself is iterable, and we can turn this back into a list by just calling the list function here. So what we get back is this list of lengths just as all of our other methods did. However, we were able to reduce the length of the code quite a bit and we were able to say that what we want to do, we don't want to filter anything, we don't want to transform it in any other way, we just want to get the length of each word for each string in this list of words here. And so the intentionality behind using the map function makes it that much clearer. So in this case, we've looked at how to actually use a built-in function, but we can also pass in our user defined functions here. So for this, what we're actually going to do is change our lists a little bit here. So we'll have a, we'll just call this items and we'll have the values from one through five and say we wanted to be able to take each of these numbers and find the cube of them. So what we can do is create a function here called uh, cube and all we're going to do is return that value raised to the power of three. And so we can now pass this cube function object in into the map function as well as our list of items and return the cube value for each of them. So we can right here, we'll call this map equals 
And again, we'll wrap all of this in the list function so we get a nice list back. We'll call the map function and we're gonna pass in our object here. Now, we're not actually calling the function here. We're just passing in our function object. So don't put in the double parentheses because that will actually not work. And so now we just need to pass in our items here. So let's take a look at what this looks like when we print it and to make sure that everything worked here. So we need to add our closing parentheses here. And now when we run this, we can see that it's cubing each of the values in our original list. So you may be wondering, okay, this is actually a little bit more code than writing a list comprehension. And so this is where the use of anonymous functions and the map function actually comes into play. The value of defining this function outside of it is that we can actually reuse it in subsequent map calls. However, in some cases, you don't want to do this. It also means that if this function is defined much further up in your code than you're calling it, someone reading your code may actually need to scroll around and try to figure out what's going on. So what we can do is use an anonymous lambda function defined directly within the map function. So the way that we can do this is pass in lambda of x and return the exact same value that we had before. So what we're doing here is we're making it extremely explicitly clear that what we want to do is for each item in items, we want to return the cubed value here. So when we run this, we can see that we actually get the exact same result. However, it's that much more streamlined in order to be able to express that intentionality. All right, so let's take a look at some practical examples. So for the first practical example, we're actually going to look at how to work with multiple inputs into the lambda into the map function. So Imagine that we have this list called more items here, and this list contains the values of 20, uh, 10, and so on, all the way to 50. And what we want to do is multiply this value by this value, this value by this value. And so we can still work in much of the same way here. However, we need to change our lambda function a little bit to actually accept multiple inputs. So what we can do here is called the lambda function for x and y, and then we return x times y. Now, right now, it's only passing in items here. And so what we need to do is when we actually look at the map function definition, we can see here that it actually can unpack multiple iterables. So we can simply, we can add another item here and pass in more items. So in this case, it's gonna unpack in an iterative fashion, uh, both of these items, so first it will access one and 10, then two and 20 and so on, and then pass these values into the lambda function. So in this case, the order of these iterables matters. Now, because we're multiplying, that's not actually the case, but if we were subtracting or dividing, that would matter. So when we run this now, we can actually see that it's taken each of these values and multiplied them in a stepwise fashion. So this is actually really powerful in order to be able to map multiple objects together. And so one of the really cool things that you can actually do is also be able to apply different string methods to it. And this is a really fun way of being able to work with it. So let's define this list called quiet here. And we're just gonna pass in some lowercase strings. And we'll just say, that where we want to say, hello world, how are you? And so what we want to then do is create this list called yell. And in our list called yell, we want all of these items, but they're uppercase variations. So let's clear out what we have here. What we're going to pass in is actually the string uh, upper function here. And again, we're not adding those parentheses here in order to actually call the function. So what we're going to do is now pass in our object quiet here. So when we print out our list yell, we should expect that all of these values are now in their uppercase equivalents. And we can see that this worked exactly how we wanted it to. So you're not limited necessarily to being able to just call a function. In this case, we're calling a string method here. 
Now, you can think about different ways in which you could use this in order to be able to clean up text or be able to tokenize text for natural language processing. It's quite powerful and it's one of those sort of tucked away features of the map function. All right, so let's take a look at another example here. So imagine that we have this list of dictionaries here that contains different measurements about different rectangles or different patios that we're building in our backyard and we want to be able to calculate how big each of these items is in area. So we know that in order to calculate area, we need to multiply the length by the width. And so we can actually use the map function for this and be able to return a new list of measurements that can map that's created based on these measurements here. So what we can do is call this areas and we'll use the map function. And what we wanna do here is pass in a Lambda function. So in this case, we wanna access each value X and then access the key of length or the value of length and then the value of width and multiply them together. So what we can do is write get length and we can handle this safely by passing in a value of zero if it doesn't exist. And we wanna get the value of X dot width as well and we'll handle it safely by passing in zero here. And now what we wanna do is simply iterate over each of these measurements. Now the last step we need to do is again wrap this in a list function here in order to return a list. So when we print our list areas now, what we should get back is just a list of three items that contains uh, the areas for each of these items here. What we need to do here instead is actually multiply it. And so when we run this now, what we get back is this list of areas for each of the different items in our list of dictionaries. So this is really powerful stuff and let's take a look at another example here in terms of working with tuples. So in this case we actually defined a separate list but say we had um, this list of tuples here that just contains the values of 1 through 5 and what we want to do is create a tuple of tuples that contains the original value as well as the value squared for each value. So what we're going to do here is first create a tuple, then we're going to pass in the map function. And the first map function, of course, as you know now, is the function. So we're going to write lambda of x. So it's going to access each value in here, starting with 1, then 2, and so on. And in this case, we're not just going to return a single value. We're actually going to return, well, we are returning a single value of a tuple, but that tuple will contain two values. So the first value will be x, and then x squared. And so now what we need to do is actually pass in the object that we want to map. So in this case, um, that's going to be values here. So let's print out our new tuple here of squares and see what this looks like. So we can see that it's actually returned a single tuple that contains multiple other tuples. And each tuple that's contained within it contains the original value and the value squared. So this opens up a lot of possibility in terms of actually being able to work with more complex operations. And granted, this wasn't in theory that complex. However, we are returning much more complex objects here. So this brings us to the end of this tutorial. I really hope that you learned something new about how to use Python in much more creative ways. If you did, please consider hitting the like button. If you haven't yet subscribed, consider subscribing and hitting the little bell icon to be notified when I release new videos just like this one. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.